Have you ever heard of an incident called the Shampoo Idiot 7.5? Four idiots kidnap a hostage and demanded the president of the U.S. to do a striptease. Now, ultimately, a special force team attacked them, but the crime scene was a disaster. That's a commemorative photo of the incident. Why are they smiling? And what happened to the four idiots? Well, even if I told you, you'd never believe me. But it actually did happen seven years ago. The movie you're about to watch is based on a true event. According to the director, Spicy Mac. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the King of Pit Fighters. The LAPD prohibited this ridiculous bout two years ago. Now, Bob, who's fighting today? Well, Tom, we have Sushi Chef versus Paraglider, Hypnotist versus Hypnotist, Physician versus Surgeon, and Swimmer versus Boxer. Tonight, I'm with you. Excellent, excellent. Well, who'd have thought about this first match? Is Boxer versus Swimmer. This is the ultimate main title match we've been waiting for. In the right-hand corner, the human werefish, Arnold Seymour Wilson. Why is Swimmer wearing a life jacket? I don't know, Bob. In the left-hand corner, we have the All-American Donkey Ways Boxing Champion of the Bermuda Triangle Boxing League, Mikey Gordon. According to Mikey, he is listed in the Guinness Book of World Records for his streak of 900 undisputed street fights in New York. The Guinness Book doesn't have a category for street fights. My name is Mikey Gordon. And when I was a child, I was beaten up by a little girl. That's the day that I vowed never to be defeated again. Fighting is an instinctive and primitive action, connecting us to the roots of our human nature! Oh, Swimmer strikes Boxer with a slipper! Hey, Tom, you think he's won 900 fights in New York? Oh, that's a white card! Yeah. Swimmer thinks it's a reward! What an idiot! Well, Bob, it looks like Swimmer has an exotic new fighting style! That's one hell of a move! Looks like Boxer's having trouble dealing with it. And Swimmer is using some kind of turtle defense. It's brilliant. Holy Ben Affleck, Swimmer has just launched a Pearl Harbor attack on Boxer. Boxer has just hit his head, and it looks like Swimmer is starting a butterfly attack. That's a great butterfly attack. And look at this, Bob Swimmer is starting a freestyle stroke and attacking him with a flutter kick. Swimmer's taking a breath over two strokes. That's amazing. Oh, but look at that, Bob Boxer is up and he's using Swimmer's butterfly attack against him. What a thief. Why doesn't he just hit Swimmer? He's a boxer. This boxer's so weak. Holy monkey feces. Swimmer is doing a synchronized swimming routine on him. And in a spirit of harmony, Swimmer has united the entire arena. It's just beautiful. Unbelievable, Swimmer has beaten Boxer. I can't believe it. Swimmer looks like a whip. This is fixed. Recently, 
the number of degenerate crimes have been increasing in Los Angeles. Robbery, kidnapping, gang banging, and animal abuse. Hey, let's not forget LA's drug problem. We have too many drug addicts and not enough jail cells. Besides, we have bigger fish to fry. As of late, the crimes have taken an unpredictable turn. For example, the Briefs in Brazier armored car robbery case, which occurred last year in front of the Bank of Africa on Hollywood. In this case, three men who wore only briefs and brassiers attacked an armored car, relieved it of $5 million, and escaped without a trace. Although there were more than 15 eyewitnesses, nobody memorized the bank robbers' faces because the witnesses paid attention only to the robbers' strange choice of attire. Too bad it could have been some hot blondes instead, huh, guys? <laughs> Shut up! For these kinds of cases, the LAPD has instituted a new policy. We will be rigorously preparing beforehand by doing robbery training exercises. These exercises will be unscripted, unforeseen, and unpredictable. Preparation means prevention. What kind of robbery training are you talking about? We enlist four degenerate freaks as robbers. We make them hijack a car, which contains money and a hostage. These, of course, we prepare beforehand. Then the robbers make their way to a predetermined hideout where we come in and besiege them. From then on, we let them do whatever they want. That way, it is completely unpredictable for us and we must be flexible to any move they make. When's this gonna happen? I'm not gonna tell you. All I'm gonna let you know is that it will be someday within a month from now. As soon as we're underway, we'll let you know. Got it. But this is just a training exercise. I want no civilians other than your four recruits involved. Of course. And don't worry. The lieutenant will act as the victim. I didn't know that. Shut up! Where are you going to find four freaks? I've already got my four freaks. Smash you. Oh, you're that fragile little boxer, aren't you? No, wait till I get out of this. I'm gonna punch you so hard, blood will burst out your ears in 2.7 seconds. They'll be calling you a bloody ear guy. Hey, settle down, you two. My name is Jack. Why am I here? I'll tell you why. Make sure your wife has really big breasts. I don't care about breast size. Son, trust me. You'll thank me when you get older. What? Sorry.
I got her license plate number, so I called the illegal local informer who could give me her information. Hello? This phone booth is bugged. Please go to an ATM immediately. Hello? This ATM is safe to do illegal dealings. Are you kidding? This place is way more obvious. What kind of information do you want? Okay. Can you tell me who the owner of this license plate is? Attend an illegal underground fighting bout and come here again. I'll give you her phone number then. See you. Hey, wait! Next bout is Super Surgeon versus Physician. The surgeon treats with operations, but Physician treats with medicine. Each fighter has a lot of pride. Well, we have a new fighter on the tournament. His name is Dr. Jack. If he swings his stethoscope fast enough, it could be deadly. In the left-hand corner, Super Surgeon Hankles. In accordance with fighting tradition, he sterilizes both his hands before the bout. And the gong has gone up prematurely. Without a body check? Surgeon's kicking range is pathetically short. He doesn't want to get those sterilized hands dirty. Oh my god! Doctor has contaminated the sterilized hands! That's the fastest way to piss off a surgeon, Tom. Surgeon has just abandoned his kick and is flailing about like an eight-year-old little girl. He has gone crazy. He's totally lost all his professional composure. And they grab each other and fall in. Surgeon's got him in an arm lock. Surgeon looks really mad. Doctor's definitely in a buy now. Now Surgeon has pulled out a rubber turning and he's tying off Doctor's arm. And he's taken out a syringe. I wonder if this treatment is covered by his health insurance. It's so dangerous. And Doctor has placed a stethoscope over the surgeon's ears. And surgeon's desperately looking for a vein. Should they clean his arm with an alcohol swab before the injection? And Doctor's screaming into a stethoscope. That can't be good for his ears. Unbelievable. This is an epic battle, Bob. Look at the, wait, wait a second. The referee looks a little wobbly. Oh, no, the syringe is stuck in the referee's ass. And he's giving a white card to the audience. He's really out of it. He just passed out. Well, the doctor's examining the referee. We are very lucky to have two licensed doctors here. Anybody want to do mouth to mouth? You can do it! LAPD! Let's get out of here. Come on. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. That's why I'm here. You guys are real comedians. Let me explain the situation. You took part in an illegal underground fighting show and got busted. However, if you aid the LAPD in a small routine robbery training exercise, well, forget this nasty incident ever happened. Otherwise, you're going to jail. Which will it be? If we cooperate with your robbery training exercise, we walk free, right? Correcto. Two points for you. Sounds good to me. What about you guys? Good choice. You guys aren't as dumb as you look. Okay, now I'm going to train you guys by playing a little game of tag. 
Rules are simple. If you don't want to be beaten up, just run away from me. Ready? Go! Didn't you listen to the rules? Me too? Run! No! Was made for women. Shut up! I, I found them in the men's department. Right. <laughs> They're cute. <laughs> They're comfortable. Now let me ask: If you guys were real robbers, what kind of weapons would you use? I give you three minutes. Ready? Go. Well, if I were a robber, I would love a shotgun. Really? Now, me personally. If I were a robber, I'd use at least a Patriot missile. Blow everybody to smithereens. You're an idiot. Wait, what was that, Pansy? Well, since this robbery is on the ground, I would use a landmine. I can blow anything away. How are you gonna dig through the concrete to bury it? Use a kid's Santa shovel. Time's up. What have you got? Wait, that wasn't three minutes. Did I say three minutes? Okay, I would have a shotgun. Guns are not allowed. What? Even elementary school students can carry guns. I figured you guys would lack imagination. So I've prepared for you a special robbery kit. A roll of gaffer's tape, a bunch of bananas, paper bag, a cell phone, a rope, and a bottle of shampoo. What are we supposed to do with a bottle of shampoo? Haven't you heard how dangerous a single bottle of shampoo can be? No. For human beings, one of the most defenseless situations in daily life is in the middle of the shampoo cycle. Because shampoo bubbles obscure our eyesight, this is when we're at our most vulnerable. In fact, our data says that 98% of the prisoners in jail are attacked during the shampoo cycle. What about the other 2%? They were attacked during the conditioner cycle. <laughs> What about those prisoners that used an all-in-one shampoo conditioner? It's a little tip from me. Remember, the shampoo bottle is your most powerful ally. Use it well. Who would have thought this Nancy boy could beat me? I'm supposed to be the strongest fighter in the world. And this beach bum should never have defeated me with his butterfly attack. Never. Never! I'm Mikey Gordon, and I was born to fight. I've become the strongest fighter, and I traveled all over the world. And this is a story of how I squashed all my enemies like ants. Umbo was the strongest fighter in all of Africa. Legend has it that he killed 900 chickens in one night and ate them all. We had a titanic battle. I have to go cut up a chicken today. Meet me here at 2 p.m. tomorrow. Don't be late. I'm gonna gut you like a fish. The next day I waited and waited and waited some more, but he never showed up. <laughs> Umbobo, the strongest fighter in Africa, was apparently the heaviest sleeper, too. After I defeated Umbobo, I went to France to fight Jean-Pierre Escargot. He was the strongest fighter France had to offer. Also the prettiest. Uh, but, but not in a gay way, though. Wait! I need to warm up. Uh, 95! 96! 99! 100! 
Vol 102 199 200 201 202 199 1000 1001 1002 This car go warmed up for more than 3 hours. Oh mon dieu. I forget one last thing. Come on. Let's dance. Since Escargo got defeated by gravity, I went to China to fight Chan Li, the best kung fu fighter in the world. Our battle was the bloodiest I'd ever been in. Nishima Botohu! Chashishima! She pushy wood all. Turned out Chanley's wife was the world's best kung fu fighter. But they're lucky, because if I'd punched them, they would be deader than dead. At least I had some nice reading material for the rest of my journey, though. I gave up fighting with humans, so I went to Brazil to kill THE legendary giant catfish. I found the big stream where my enemy roamed. And I made a spear to fight like a true Spartan. I carefully stalked my enemy for a while. Then suddenly, he appeared and attacked me. The fight ended in a flash, and I believe it was not an animal abuse. Then I chopped up some green onion looking thing. I've learned to live off the land, so a small tunnel's like a five star hotel to me. I don't kill for no reason, so I cook the giant catfish using the fake green onions. After defeating the giant catfish, I searched for bigger things to fight. So I returned to the USC to fight a, with a monster train. I waited for the train for what seemed like an eternity. I tried to listen for it. But the rail was too damn hot. Finally it came. To become the strongest fighter and to finish my great journey, I had to defeat this train. Victory was mine! But it was too scared of me, so I had to chase it down. Come back and fight me like a man! I am the strongest fighter in the world. This idiot could never beat me. That bout must have been some kind of a mistake. I'm gonna crush this pansy after the training robbery. I'm not weak. I'm not weak! You're so weak. You are. <laughs> Listen up. Attack the driver first, then take the man to the stronghold using the captured car. The LAPD will attack you there. Why do I have the shampoo bottle? Once the robbery training is underway, you guys are gonna be wanted men. But don't worry, it's just a training exercise. Hey, Captain. Where are you? I'm on site. We're heading to the location. Just do your job. 
Uh, Ma'am, please stop. I'm uh, LAPD. Uh, I'm sorry, I need you to stop. You're committing a crime. What's the crime? Oh, your beauty. You're so hot. <laughs> hey, you! Come back with my tires! Hey! Are you okay? A bum just stole my teddy bear. <laughs> LAPD, give me back my tires! You don't look like LAPD! <laughs> but you look like an idiot! <laughs> the man showed up out of nowhere, you know, and then he took my teddy bear and he left. I don't know. Rock away. and roll, gentlemen! <laughs> Give it tight, Doc. Uh, You're supposed to shampoo him first and then hit him. Uh, oh, it smells so good. Uh, 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 <laughs> I need water to make more bubbles. Uh, <laughs> Paper or plastic? <laughs> Stronghold, here we come. LAPD. I just witnessed a carjacking. What happened? They shampooed the victim. Hello? That was a very funny robbery scene. I'm sorry. <laughs> Two thieves stole my tires. I couldn't make it. What? Those four chumps hijacked the wrong car? Whose car did they attack? Captain? Captain? Why'd you steal a chocolate bar from the supermarket? Uh, I was hungry at that time. You're supposed to be a cop, damn it! Theft is illegal! What is this crap? <gasps> Ma'am, uh, how can the LAPD help you? A stalker sent me a videotape. I think he's crazy. I want you to identify and arrest him, please. Um. Sure, ma'am. I assure you the uh, LAPD are the best, I mean the best there is, and uh, we will do everything we can to uh, catch the criminal. You don't understand. I want this sick man thrown in jail. 
Oh, oh yes, ma'am. I, 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 pity your, I pity your situation, but I, I assure you that I will try my hardest inside you, I mean, for you, that I possibly can. That's just my entry into the Cannes Film Festival. Well, oh, you take me for a fool? This looks more like you're stalking some poor lady. Well, I was just aiming for realism in my movie. You think I'm an idiot? You're in big trouble, pal. But I'm gonna give you one more chance. You screw up again, and you're out of here. You screw up again, and you're out of here. Can you guys hear a cell phone ringing? Don't pick it up, man. And why not, Banana Head? Well. Because talking on a cell phone while in a car is prohibited in California. That law only applies to the person driving the car. Which idiot left the cell phone in the trunk? All right, people, we have a kidnapping. Let's get ready for action. Let's move out. Captain, we have a problem. I'm sorry, okay? That this hot chick, she distracted me and two deadbeats, they stole my tire. You're a pumpkin head! They attacked an innocent civilian! If our boss was this one, could have been fired, you understand? I know, alright, well, we gotta call him and abort the mission. I did! But they didn't respond! Four criminals kidnapped a man. Is this your robbery training exercise? No, 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 no. no. This isn't the robbery training exercise. Um, I mean, I wouldn't allow for a real civilian hostage to be kidnapped. Are you sure? Of course. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's nail these suckers. All right. <laughs> Why didn't you tell them the truth? Not possible. I can't afford another mistake. Well. Captain, we ought to call the FBI, okay? okay? If they know this, we are in some big trouble. We've got to solve this by ourselves. Well, what are we gonna do? Firstly, we're gonna erase all the data on those four schmucks. Right, let's go. What are you doing? Delete it. I, I don't know why. I, I can't delete this file. You're useless. Get out. Let me do it. What the hell is going on here? Must be a curse. I'm scared. Be cool. Chill out. Why does eyebrow size change? It's just a computer error. No, it, it, it changed to a virus. Get me out of here! Get me out! Fugitives with no past. Gather all the men. We're gonna go to the stronghold. You got it, Captain. Also, I need a sniper. We must silence them so they never let anyone know of our mistake.
We forgot the hostage. We've just arrived at the stronghold with a hostage, so what do we do next? Okay. LAPD will arrive there soon. You guys could demand anything in exchange for releasing your hostage. Got it. We can demand anything we want? Right. This is just training, so anything you can dream up, you can demand. Okay. Let us think about what we want. I'll call you later. Okay. You guys want pizza? Shave. No, I'm not gonna shave. Shave. No, my mustache is my look. It's who I am. It's my character. I've... Your look is bringing us disaster. Now, shave. Position. They even got a sniper. This is gonna be fun. <laughs> Hello? I'm gonna ask you guys to surrender. Obviously, you should resist. In addition, to help with the realism, you should scream at us, okay? Okay. Gentlemen, we're in business. <laughs> You are surrounded by LA's finest. Resistance is useless. Release the hostage at once, unharmed, or else. Shut up, pig! Come any closer and we'll kill the hostage! I don't care if you do come any closer! We're gonna kill the hostage anyways! <laughs> Damn, they're gonna starve us out. What's the situation? Four degenerate freaks has taken a hostage and dug themselves into this house. Who the hell are you? I'm John James, the negotiator for the FBI. Excuse me. Who is that guy? Don't you know who John James is? No. He is the legendary negotiator of the FBI. In the South Central hostage crisis, he offered his own 15-year-old daughter as a replacement hostage to a criminal in exchange for a 60-year-old man. This may seem far-fetched, but it actually happened. He never hesitates to do what is necessary to save a hostage. I could be in trouble here, because this man is the best of the best. He wasn't 60, he was 59. Excuse me, again. What's that over there? They're from the TV company, aren't they? I'm gonna be a TV star like Nicolas Cage! <laughs> Please, let us know about the current situation. Four misunderstood boys have taken a hostage in that house. I'm here to persuade them to do the right thing. The criminals might be watching this on TV. Do you have anything to say to them? I want to be your friend. As proof that I have no weapons and that I bear you no ill will, I will appear before you dressed only in my briefs. I ask you not to hurt the hostage. That's it. Excuse me. I guess they sold the broadcast rights to a comedy network. I love his choice of briefs. And I wish they could have hired a female stripper. 
Why didn't they mention that this was a robbery training exercise for TV? I don't want to aggravate the situation, so I'm going in alone. You, get me a cup of hot cocoa. Yes, sir. What now? Listen, an FBI negotiator is coming in. Don't forget that this is training. Demand the most difficult request to grant. Your job is to embarrass the LAPD. Do you understand? Yeah, I understand. But why is this being televised? It's because one greedy TV company bought the broadcast rights to this training exercise. Just think about your demands. All right. If the FBI is successful, then... Get out of here! Out! Out! Our careers are finished. We have no choice but to shoot them too. Hey guys. Jason said we should demand whatever we want. You know, how about we ask for 10,000 double big kahuna burgers? This is America, land of the hamburger. Anybody can get 10,000 big kahuna burgers. Hey, we can ask for anything we want, right? No matter how stupid. <laughs> how about let's ask the President of the United States to do some strip tease in a seedy club in Los Angeles. <laughs> Yo, that's the best idea you've had all day. Agent James, I have your hot cocoa. Thank you. How many years have you been working with the FBI? Oh, actually, I'm LAPD, but I would love to be reassigned to the FBI someday. Good. In the FBI, I'm well known for my enthusiasm for cocoa. I drink it seven times a day. Recently, my blood sugar level is elevated, and my doctors advised me to cut back on my intake of cocoa. But I'd rather die young than give up cocoa. Do you know why I drink so much cocoa? No, I have no idea. Because I love cocoa. You made this cocoa using Mexican chocolate and hot water, didn't you? That's right. How'd you know that? There's nothing wrong with using Mexican chocolate, but using hot water instead of milk? This situation is unacceptable. I I'm sorry, sir. I I'm a virgin cocoa maker. I don't know why, but they're talking about cocoa. You should make every cup of cocoa as though it were your last. You should feel the milk love the chocolate and stir with passion. If things go wrong in there, this could be my last cocoa, and I wanted it to be the best. I I'm sorry, sir. Next time, I promise, I shall put my heart and my soul into making the best cup of cocoa ever made in the history of mankind. Good. I hope I survive this ordeal so that I may taste your cocoa again. Now. I have a hostage crisis to deal with. Be careful in there, sir. My name is John James. I'm the negotiator for the FBI. I want to make sure the hostage is still alive. Don't come any closer, or we're gonna kill the hostage! Cool it, man. If you hurt him, I can't get you what you want. Sure is nice out here. I wanted to go hiking with my family and have a picnic. Sounds nice, doesn't it? Yeah, it's how I pictured my life should be. Man, I hate hiking! And all that other soft-ass shit! 
I've sacrificed my day off to be here, dressed only in my briefs, almost naked before the world. I've conquered my shame to be with you. Well, you know, my taxes pay for your brief, so shut your mouth and negotiate. Just relax and tell me what your demands are. We want to talk to the President of the United States. You want the President? Yeah, call him ASAP or else we're gonna uh, gangbang the hostage and put him in a body bag. You got it? But I need a little time. This is John James. Transfer me to the president immediately. This could be tough. These guys are master criminals. Kids, you can ask the president any questions today because he's very knowledgeable. Stay away from the president. You. Mr. President, what is the difference between monkeys and gorillas? That's a very tricky question. If I remember right, scientists say that monkeys become gorillas when they're grown up, which means gorilla babies are really monkeys. You understand? No. Is it true the US government signed a contract with the aliens from outer space? Not a contract, a treaty. How do you know about that? Mr. President, that's classified information. Oh, really? Hmm. Let me rephrase that. The answer is no. We only got death ray technology. That's laser beam weaponry from them. That's Mr. All. President, that's classified too. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Aliens do not exist. I want to be president. You're too young to be the president. It's very tough because there are 300 million American citizens and 12 million illegal Mexicans in the country. That is my duty to protect as the President of the United States. They are our heart. They are our soul. They are our tax resources. I will do anything for them. Usually, we just get police chases. Today, we have a nice robbery. Good for ratings, I bet. Can't wait to see our boys take those criminals out. Mr. President, the criminals have demanded you directly. What? They demand me? Okay, I'll do anything they want me to do. Oh, Mr. President, and this is very difficult to say, but the criminals demand you do a striptease in a seedy club in Los Angeles. They insist they'll kill the hostages unless you do it. This is the toughest decision of my life. Airstrike with nuclear weapons approved. President, be crazy. What the hell is that? Oh my god. Mr. President, we can't order an airstrike with new clear weapons on a domestic civilian target. Pardon the interruption, Mr. President, but your main presidential rival, Jose Gonzalez, is leading in the popularity polls. If he continues with this momentum, he could win this election. The people need you, Mr. President. The world will be watching what you do. And this is your chance to make history, or be history. Prepare Air Force One.
General Green, it's John. We're gonna need your special team here, just in case. Now, if the president does do a striptease, I'm gonna tip him five dollars in his G-string. Where's your respect? This is the leader of your country. Five dollars is not enough. You gotta make it at least ten. I'm not rich, and, and besides, the striptease was your idea, Turtlehead. The only information I can get is that they were beating the victim with a bottle of shampoo. A bottle of shampoo? I think the American people will admire your bravery. Mr. President, just relax and concentrate on your dancing. Enjoy the moment. C can I get tipped? our country great. He was shy at the beginning, but now he looks more like he's enjoying his dance. I'm going to go give him a dollar tip. That was fast. Wait, why is the real president doing the strip tease? Ooh, I don't think this is a robbery training exercise anymore. Care what you guys think, but I think this is hysterical. <laughs> what is this for real? Who did we kidnap? Who the hell are you? Are you with the LAPD? Do I look like a cop? Apparently, we're real criminals now. I don't know about you, but I'll never yield to the man. Wait, I don't want to get in any trouble, man. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why does Captain Jason still insist this is a training exercise? Uh, obviously, that psychopath Jason set us up. But, but surely the cops gotta still know this is a training robbery, right? If, if Jason didn't tell them, nobody's gonna know. Well, then if that's true, the sniper's getting ready to take us all out. Permanently. I found one idiot. Don't shoot! Don't shoot! We are not here to kill them! If they... If they take this out, no one's gonna know about this. Call the cops. Battery's dead. What, what are we gonna do? Let's continue the training exercise. Who died and made you leader? Just do it. This now is General Green, who will take command for breaking into the criminal stronghold. General Green also follows a policy of environmentally friendly weapons for a better tomorrow. Good afternoon, General Green. Thank you for coming. 
Hello, citizens. Oh, by the way, the president's striptease was the funniest thing I've ever seen. If I were there, I would have given him at least, oh, $100 in $1 bills. <laughs> what the? Um, General Green. Yes, don't worry. Don't worry. I'll explain my military strategy later when we're on the air. Can a guy have a little fun? General Green, we're on the air now. Now? Now, yes. A daze. There are many kinds of pollutant, environmentally hazardous arms. Nuclear weapons, biological weapons, chemical weapons. They harm people and cause serious environmental pollution. Therefore, my special forces have invented the anti-casualty green weapon. I give you my 100% guarantee that this crisis will be solved speedily, safely, and without even one human casualty. I heard your special forces code name was SWAV. What does that stand for? Special weapons and vegetables. You're using vegetables as weapons? That is the question I was waiting for. Firstly, to achieve a better tomorrow, we need environmentally friendly weapons. Through much research costing billions of dollars, we finally succeeded in creating biodegradable weapons which turn back to soil in 10 days. They also make great fertilizer. Please watch the sample footage of our special experiment. French bread. By aging French bread for a few days, it dries and stiffens up moderately. If we strike an enemy with it, we can knock him out. It is particularly effective on drug addicts. A green pie is also very useful. With a direct hit to an enemy's face, we can deprive them of his vision. We codenamed it the Anti-Vision Special Weapon, or the AFSU. Also, did you know that by throwing a soft-boiled egg, which is microwaved for 95.97 seconds exactly, it explodes destructively when it hits the enemy. In addition, by dusting him with flour, we can win an important mind game. Our enemy is not only beaten, but humiliated like a child bullied at school. We call it the ultimate psychological weapon. Piping hot boiled pasta, when poured over an enemy, can cause catastrophic damage. We call it the inferno weapon. We will complete our mission using these kinds of special weapons, which will never pollute the environment. This is our policy. Now, the greatest benefit of using these anti-lethal weapons is that even if these weapons are stolen by the enemy, they are, after all, only eggs, pies, and pasta, which can't threaten us at all. When we wield these weapons, they're environmentally friendly. When we are attacked by an enemy with these weapons, it's safe. Now this is what I call killing two birds with one stone. What if the enemy have guns? Do these eco-weapons work on them? No problem. Our special development team has been working on this day and night. And as long as the funding continues, we will develop the perfect anti-gun echo counter weapon made completely from vegetables within 15 years. Could you tell me about your strategy for breaking into the stronghold? Obviously, I can't go into details. You never know who could be watching. But our team will consist of four highly trained members. They'll break into the stronghold from the back entrance. First, by using the French bread, we will strike the hostage's head until he passes out. This means we can get rid of the criminal's trump card first. Next, we suppress the criminals by using explosive eggs, cream pie, and boiled pasta. They will be too shocked to stop us. Victory will be ours. The criminals could be watching this on television right now. Well, of course, you can edit out that part, can't you? No! This is crazy. I'm afraid of their deadly vegetable weapons. But, but they're just vegetables. I mean, if we take them, we can eat them. Yeah, but that French bread looks dangerous. <laughs> Not to worry. I have a recipe that can get us out of this mess. I used to be the guru of this crazy church called Magapada. Guiding people on the road to enlightenment is the easiest way to make money. Let's face it, life can be scary and meaningless. Death, terror, disease, failing a smog check. 
So I invited these unhappy people into my congregation. Today I'm going to tell you the story of how the church of Magapada came into being. Many years ago I was a bum. I ate nine cent noodles from a nine cent store and I washed my hair in a vending machine. Then one day my best friend Benjamin gave me a packet of magical white powder. So I inhaled the magic white powder. <laughs> Suddenly the god Amagapada appeared before me. He said, spread Magapada's word and save as many souls as you can. This is your mission. Was the magical white powder cocaine or something? It doesn't matter what the magical white powder was. What matters is that the god Magapada appeared before me. Hooray for the god Magapada! Hooray for the god Magapada! I thought, now oh, these guys are real dickheads. But I wanted to know how idiotic they were, so I took it a step further. My faithful believers, you have come long on your quest for spiritual enlightenment. So today, we will see a very special celebrity from the spiritual realm, Pablo. Marilyn Monroe will possess Pablo. Everybody, call out to Marilyn. Marilyn Monroe. Boop-dee-boop. Behold Monroe! He is the real Marilyn Monroe! Ah! Zanyo Khan! Zanyo Khan! Zanyo Khan! What a bunch of idiots. But at my moment of certain victory, I made a critical mistake. I uttered a name I should never have spoken. Next, Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro. You talking to me? De Niro's most on the opposite side. Are you talking to me? Yeah. Are you talking to me? It's in the right place now, but he isn't even dead yet. Next is the Godfather. Come to me on the day of my daughter's wedding. You show me love respect. Where's my Godfather? It's too late. You are just an impressionist. Come on, this is just a rip-off church. Oh, this is donkey piss. Okay, then I'm just, I'm just gonna go. Man, this was special. I can't believe it. What are you doing? I'm the Godfather. Well, I ever do to deserve such disrespect from you. I don't understand why you do this to me. Ah, uh, why do you disrespect me like this? I, I can do Christopher Walken if you'd like. I should have just brainwashed them. That's why I mastered hypnotism. Did you see how my perfect hypnotism changed people into monkeys in the underground fighting bout? The next qualifying round is a hypnotist Billy Williams versus a hypnotist Sean Malkovich. Bob, do you believe in hypnotism? No. Billy's specialty is transforming people to monkeys. Unbelievable. John Malkovich's specialty is transforming people into chickens. Ridiculous. Billy's gradually becoming a chicken, and Malkovich is gradually becoming a monkey. Unbelievable. And the audience are changing into monkeys and chickens. I don't know why, but the round girl has changed into a beautiful swan. It's Panama the of the Marine. Fantastic. Why are you meeting Banana? Get out of here. Oh Hypnotism will save us from swap. We have no choice. I don't want to be hit by French bread. They still haven't released the hostage. 
It's time to authorize General Green's special force. What? Don't worry. Nobody will be hurt. Team leader, our strategy has been leaked on the air by that stupid TV company. I authorize the use of dancing gas. The dancing gas? It hasn't been tested yet. Well, desperate times call for desperate measures. To use such a brutal weapon, it's an act of lunacy. All right, listen up. Our strategy has been leaked by some stupid TV company. In response, I order use of the dancing gas. But it hasn't been tested yet. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Never seen such a brutal weapon. It's an act of lunacy. Let's move out. This cage is much stronger than French bread. Why didn't they use this? I concur. I forgot to nuke these eggs, sir. If they're not nuked, they're useless, damn it! I've broken my French bread, sir. Use your double French bread technique! Yes, sir! How's the pasta situation? Captain, my pasta's getting cold. Damn. If the pasta gets cold, it'll be rendered useless. Then you go! Yes, sir! Hey, man, lukewarm pasta delivery? I thought we ordered a pizza. Me too. No, guys, it's a trap. Say something! This is Primavera. Move! 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 They don't even have guns! Neither do we! Freeze, you are under arrest! You are a monkey, 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 you are a monkey. <laughs> CQ1, CQ1, I have four swap monkeys, four swap monkeys, over. Hey, what's the matter with you? Flashback. Rockovich. You are a monkey. 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 And you are a chicken. Shoot the criminals! I don't care about the hostage's life! Cancel that order. We're here to save them. Don't tell me how to do my job. I don't tell you how to dress. These briefs are my uniform, and they're not coming off until I get these men home alive. Why are you so insistent on killing them? Are you afraid of them being questioned? Your FBI and your SWAB didn't work. It is time for us to end this. Negative. These criminals are human beings. No firearms. We want to talk to John James. Excuse me once more. Hurry up, hurry up! Harrison! Harrison! What are you doing? Agent James, I have something important to tell you. No need to explain. I want you to do something for me. This is John James. Please open the door. Mr. James, it was Captain Jason. I thought Jason was at the bottom of this. Harrison just confirmed my suspicions. Wait, you knew Jason was involved? 
Yes, I thought something was fishy from the start. So why did you make the president do that strip tease? Yeah, that was just a joke. Doing a strip tease to save one American citizen's life has always been and will always be the president's responsibility. I had no idea. <laughs> Mr. James, it would be an honor to bear your children. Thank you. Maybe later. But for now, your mission is aborted. Let's get out of here. Don't move, gentlemen. You're all my hostages now. My name is Leo. Now I know who the real criminal is. Who shampooed my hair? He did it! Oh. <laughs> uh, do you want me to condition your hair too? I only use an all-in-one shampoo and conditioner. Sonny is sick. Don. I don't know how to say it, but I'm sorry about everything. Leo, you've done nothing wrong. You've done very well. You've created many opportunities for this family. Until now, I only had crab or shrimp in my pasta. But now, thanks to you, I've discovered the delights of shrimp and crab and lobster in one pasta dish. It, it's just very good. <laughs> As you know, the FBI will be investigating our family soon. And there are some things I do not wish to have investigated, such as um, bribing the LAPD, not to forget our smuggling pasta syndicate. You're a good kid. I want to fly you to Mexico. I'll give you one million dollars here, and you go to Mexico and start a new life in Mexico. Don, I'm sorry. I couldn't hear you. Sonny, uh, uh, Sonny, you, you explain to him, huh? I'm sorry, Don. I, I only understood the part about the crab and shrimp pasta. Victor, we really have a smuggling pasta syndicate. I didn't know that. Panasonic, you explain it to him, eh? Don says take the million dollars to start a new life in Mexico. Gracias, Signore. Good kid, good kid, good kid, good kid, good kid, good kid. I should be in Mexico. If I'm arrested, I'm a dead man. I'm gonna kill all you guys. Listen, I know what you did to those weapons manufacturers. 
And being a humanitarian, I'm all for stopping those warmongers. I really respect your actions. Yeah, I read about you in the newspapers. You're the one who shut down those weapons manufacturers. I know you're here to arrest me, you Chippendale. How dare you say such a horrible thing to this legendary man? Actually, I could arrest Leo. Because that's the best way to save you four guys. However, I'm about saving all life. If I save you four, then Leo's gonna fry in the electric chair. And I can't have that. We all go home, or nobody goes home. What's the LAPD gonna do? Jason's gonna break in here right now and kill all of you. Come on! I knew he was a liar! Here's the situation. You guys have two options. The first option is plan A. The police break in here right now, shoot the four of you, and then shoot Leo too, because he has the gun. Worst case scenario, everyone except me dies. And Leo, you lose the million dollars. If we turn him in, how much is the bounty? $100,000. Wow, that's a lot. The second option is plan B. Now listen very carefully. Everyone cooperates in escaping here. If the escape is successful, Leo should then divide the million dollars between the five of you. That's $200,000 a piece, which is much more than the bounty on Leo's head. And for him, at least he gets a little money for his trouble. Much better than plan A, isn't it? My only goal here is your survival. Leo, I don't want to arrest you. And you can't escape here alone. You need us. So, plan A, you're killed and lose the million dollars. Or plan B, you pocket $200,000 and we help each other. Which do you prefer? Plan B. What have you got? Nothing. But I promise, if we are united, we can survive. Let's see what we've got. I, I found this headgear in this pole in the basement. I don't believe it. What? This is dancing gas. If you inhale this gas and hear music, you can't stop dancing, rendering you defenseless. How long can you hold your breath? At least three minutes, sir. Good. We may have a use for you yet. Gentlemen, we have plan B. Just don't move, creep. Where are the rest of the guys? Why not taste of your costume? Life jackets don't work on the ground. You look like a damn idiot. Blaster. Pretty boy. What the hell is that? Hold your breath, and go! We gotta go, Twinkle Toes! <laughs> no fear, keep moving! I can't believe my eyes. Six men have vacated the building and it looks like they're connected with a rope. The rope appears to be attached to a gun. 
Oh my god, if one of them falls, the final guy will be shot. The final guy looks like the famous FBI negotiator John James. If he dies, the world will mourn the passing of a truly great man. Unbelievable. I can't take anybody out. The rope's connected to the gun. <laughs> Game over. I know what you did. Then you know what I must do. Do what you have to. I had my new FBI recruit switch your gun, just in case. It's over, Captain. And he's also learned the fine art of cocoa making. <laughs> you guys are free to go. Good choice. You are one hell of a negotiator. I know. Excuse me, miss. Would you mind taking a commemorative photo for us? Sure, sexy. Butterfly attack, yeah, it was the strongest. Thanks. You're a real loser. You know, you uh, forgot the one million dollars in the stronghold. <laughs> we'll never forget you, John James. Mr. James, I love you. I know. Just don't tell my wife. <laughs> you guys are free. Go! I'll take full responsibility for all of this. Actually, I have a plan to save us all. It seems that the terrible ordeal we just witnessed was just a training exercise. According to FBI negotiator John James, this was a joint training mission between the two organizations to improve their skills. It was kept secret to ensure the authenticity of the situation. It was very realistic for a training exercise. This is KRAP Network News from The Stronghold. This is sick. Yo, bro. What's up, man? I defeated a surgeon and a referee. Could you give me her number now, please? This ATM is hacked. Go to the electronic bulletin board. See you. Hey, wait! Gosh! Yes! Yes! Woo! Oh! Yeah. Finally, I got her phone number. I have no idea what happened to the other guys after our weird experience. But wherever they are, I hope they're safe. I ended up marrying Elizabeth when my two sons were born. Hi guys. Hi. Hi. 
Medical books normally say that it's supposed to be about nine months from impregnation to delivery, but my kids were born just after I got into a relationship with Elizabeth. Straight after. And, uh, I don't see much of me in them. I don't know the reason, but it doesn't matter to me. Eddie and Jamie are my sons. They've taught me the most important thing. John James, who gambled his life away to save the five of us. The president who did a strip tease to save the life of one American citizen. And the idiot swimmer who danced for the LAPD to save us. The most important thing? You want to know the most important thing? It's life. Bring me a hundred thousand Kahuna burgers, or I'll commit suicide and kill her too! You're not making any sense. If you commit suicide first, then you can't kill her. Think about it. You idiot! Don't touch creep! Hello? Time to authorize the skydiving attack. Board the helicopter immediately. 10 4. I'd like to order a pizza. Where? Where are we flying now? I don't have an address. <laughs> Stewardess, where's the bathroom? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the King of Pit Fighters. The LAPD prohibited this ridiculous bout two years ago. Now, Bob, who's fighting today? Well, Tom, we have Sushi Seth versus Paraglider, Hypnotist versus Hypnotist, Physician versus Surgeon, and Swimmer versus Boxer. Tonight, I'm with you. Excellent, excellent. Well, who'd have thought about this first match? It's Paraglider versus Sushi Chef. From Japan, the world's greatest sushi chef. 
Honda's master Toyota has declared that if his pupil can win in 2.7 seconds, he will commit Harry Carey. Blue Sky Jr. is allowed to bring only his escape parachute and a walkie-talkie. Now Sushi Chef is doing the ritual ceremony. Oh my god, the paraglider is sweeping his salt with a broom. That's a great insult to the Japanese. And the Sushi Chef's just trying to help the ref, but he's choking him. Tom, it's clearly the referee's fault for entering under the bottom rope. Oh, that's a white card. Oh my god, that is a saw and a white card. By getting the white card, the player has to clean the toilet room as a penalty. And here we go, Sushi Chef is attacking Paraglider with his rice paddle. But it doesn't seem to work on the helmet. Of course, 2.7 seconds has passed. What is Grandmaster Toyota going to do? Oh, tackle! He tackles Paraglider! They're fighting on the ground! Sushi Chef gets behind the Paraglider and applies the dreaded sleeper hold. But wait! Paraglider's got a walkie-talkie! Who's he gonna call for help? Mayday! Ah, Mayday! Mayday! Holy cow, he's struggling to open his escape parachute. It's useless on the ground. He's opened the escape parachute, but nothing has happened. Like I said. Jesus Christ, Superstar. Paraglider has lost consciousness, but it definitely took more than 2.7 seconds. What is the Grandmaster going to do? Tom, I'd like to see a rematch of this battle. The 60,000 feet above the ground. Great jump in Jehoshaphat. Toyota's preparing for Harry Carey. He is keeping his promise. Now that is the samurai spirit. Oh, yes, son. No. Well, if he does commit Harry Carey, he's going to make a mess of this place. Uh, 